Right. The next presentation, the poster number 40, a patient with multiple gastrointestinal carcinoid tumors uh, presenting with jejunal intersusception, a case report. Bandaran, G, B, K, D, Ravindra Kumar, S, J, Raju, Rodrigo, V, S, D. The presenting author is Bandaran, G, B, K, D. 40. Good afternoon everyone, uh, I'm from uh, District General Hospital of Chilau and uh, I'm here to present a case report of a patient with uh, multiple gastrointestinal carcinoid tumors presenting with the uh, uh, jejunal intersusception. Uh, talking about carcinoid tumors, these are kind of infrequent tumors uh, which with a uh, neuroendocrine origin uh, arising from neuro enterochromophene cells in uh, gastrointestinal and bronchopulmonary systems. Uh, unless these uh, tumors present with the classical symptoms of a carcinoid syndrome, they doesn't have uh, specific uh, symptoms, so it's very difficult to diagnose them. On the other hand, a small bowel intersusception in an adult is uh, not a straightforward diagnosis. They uh, present with uh, vague, non-specific abdominal pain, and it's very difficult to diagnose. So in this case, we have diagnosed a patient with uh, multiple carcinoid tumors presenting with a jejunal intersusception, which is a, a very rare occurrence. Uh, and there have been only two previous case reports of similar variety. Uh, this patient is a 49-year-old male with a history of uh, recent onset bronchial asthma and presented with us with a, uh, pain in the umbilical region for one day duration. And on physical examination, there was only mild abdominal tenderness, uh, initial uh, hematological and biochemical investigations were normal and we uh, went forward with the ultrasound scan and it showed uh, a, uh, proximal small bowel intersusception with the classical target sign which is shown in that first picture and uh, because of that we went forward with uh, with an uh, CECT abdomen. Uh, it, uh, uh, it confirmed the presence of uh, intersusception uh, as well as uh, it uh, showed the presence of two intra-abdominal masses uh, attached to proximal mesentery. So at this point with the history of recent onset asthma and these uh, radiological findings, we had a suspicion of a carcinoid tumor. So we, uh, uh, to assess for the tumor marker, chromogranin levels for carcinoid tumors, we uh, uh, preserved a serum sample and then we went forward with the uh, uh, explorative laparotomy. There we could uh, find an uh, uh, proximal small bowel intersusception which was uh, easily reducible and there were three intraabdominal masses, <laughs> two attached to mesentery, one uh, attached to the uh, proximal jejunum and uh, these, uh, the, those are the pictures of those uh, intraabdominal masses. This one uh, on the right corner is the one attached to the jejunum which may have acted as the, the lead point for the uh, intersusception and we uh, excised those uh, tumors with uh, wide excision margin and uh, sent for histology and histology came positive for a uh, carcinoid tumor of grade one of classic type and patient had an uneventful recovery after the surgery and he didn't have any complications. We referred that patient for oncology for further management. In the meantime, uh, we could get the uh, results of the serum chromogranin levels. It was very high in the order of uh, thousands micrograms per liter. So we could confirm our diagnosis in the uh, histologically and both biochemically. So this case was a rare thing because of this recent onset asthma and these uh, uh, radiological findings presented us with a window to diagnose this uh, rare case. Uh, in case of this di diagnosis of these cases, we have to uh, perform surgical intervention and then for the management of the carcinoid syndrome, we have to uh, uh, prefer that for chemotherapy. Thank you. Thank you. The session is open for discussion. This uh, combination of recent os onset asthma and uh, radiological findings, is it a recognized way of suspecting carcinoid tumor or is it something new that you are coming up with? Something new, yeah. Okay. So how valid do you think that is? Like, uh, we are based on this case report, of course, uh, but are there other literature suggesting that that may be the case also? Uh, yeah. So there are two cases and those also have a similar uh, kind of uh, presentations with uh, so CECD findings and intersusception. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this, th when a patient present with an intersusception, there should be some uh, uh, tumor which has some uh, uh, mechanical thing which has caused this. 
So uh, in case of these things, we uh, have to uh, consider this as a diagnosis uh, mm -hmm. uh, in a similar uh, in a similar patient. Okay. In the literature that you have gone through, mm -hmm. was there any suggestions between the relationship, any association between bronchial asthma and carcinoid tumors? The thing is that uh, bronch the carcinoid tumors give rise to this uh, carcinoid syndrome, which uh, due to the uh, serotonin activity, they give uh, shortness of breath, those flushing symptoms. So this may have been a uh, uh, thing due to those vasoactive uh, activity of this uh, tumor. So uh, this is a way of presentation of uh, carcinoid tumor in uh, patients. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to the presenter.